Hello, everybody, and welcome to the WW Newscast. Tonight is Wednesday, July... What is tonight? July 6th, 2011. I am Lou Mangello from www.radio.com, author of the Walt Disney World Trivia Books, the audio tours of Walt Disney World, and Celebrations Magazine. You can find it all over at www.radio.com. Tonight, I'm not coming to you from the studio. I'm not coming to you from Walt Disney World. Instead, I'm coming to you thanks to our friends here at Dunkin' Donuts. We had an internet outage at my house, so we uh, we adapt and move on. But uh, So tonight's broadcast is brought to you by our friends at Dunkin' Donuts. Of course, our friends over at touringplans.com. They have a research team behind the unofficial guide. Check out touringplans.com. Find out how you can save up to four hours, not at Dunkin' Donuts, in Walt Disney World or Disneyland. Maximize your time, get touring plans, crowd calendars, download the Lines application so you can find out what's going on right when you're in the parks. You can check them out over at touringplans.com. So uh, the news for this week, and uh, the news this week is not 80s like the music in the background, but uh, the news this week is about sort of some shakeups going on in, uh, in the executive level over at Walt Disney World. Uh, we, I reported a couple of weeks ago about the retirement of Al Weiss. Uh, after 39 years at the company, he gave up his leadership position, although he's staying on uh, to do some consulting and work with the company. But this week, uh, Walt Disney Parks and Resorts Chairman Tom Staggs appointed Walt Disney World President Meg Crofton to a new post, which is the President of Operations in the U.S. and, wait for it, France. So she'll be taking care of not only Walt Disney World and Disneyland, but Disneyland Paris, your Disneyland to the 80s kids uh, out there. Um, she's going to maintain her responsibilities uh, as president of Orlando, it, it, Walt Disney World. She's had that role since 2008, um, but she's also been added to the executive committee, this kind of inner circle of executives that report directly to Tom Staggs. Uh, this is sort of a continuation of a trend that's been happening over the past couple of years that maybe you've noticed or maybe not, uh, depending on how much or how closely you follow the company, but sort of the consolidation under a single umbrella, this sort of one Disney initiative where Walt Disney World and Disneyland are not separate entities, but they come under that single unified Disney Parks logo. This very much is now starting to happen at a more executive level as well as far as what they uh, control and have say over. Um, also, this week, uh, again, because of Al Weiss leaving, Tom Stags also tapped into Carl Holtz. He is the president of the Disney Cruise Line and Adventures by Disney. He's also going to take on an oversight of the Disney Vacation Club. So now these two people are sort of taking a much more uh, broader position over these areas of the company. Uh, remember, Al Weiss's position has been completely eliminated. So the roles that he had now had to be doled out to other people in the company. Again, Carl Holtz, Meg Crofton are sort of going to be the two big executives. Holtz also going to be pointed to this executive committee as well. Um, other executives who reported to Weiss now also going to report to different people as well. So Disneyland President George Calagridis, Disneyland Paris President Philippe Gass will now report also to Meg Crofton, and DVC President Jim Lewis is going to report over to Carl Holtz. Uh, there were some other changes as well. The sales and marketing divisions have been merged. Leslie Ferraro, who was Senior Vice President of Global Marketing, is now Executive Vice President of Global Marketing and Sales. And Randy Garfield, Executive Pre President of Worldwide Sales and Travel, is now going to report to uh, Ms. Ferraro. So the question I have for you, or the question maybe you're thinking to yourselves is, how does this affect us? How does this affect us as guests who are traveling to the parks? Um, Chances are you're probably, it's not going to affect you very much at all. You're probably not going to see any sort of manifestations physically sort of in the parks. Um, but I'm curious, as this has been going on, about this sort of unification of the Disney Parks brand. How do you feel about that? Um, does it affect you at all? Does it matter to you one way or the other? Or have you seen any kind of changes because of that, because of sort of that globalization of Disney Parks as a single unified brand as opposed to separate entities of Disneyland and Walt Disney World. Uh, now, obviously, that you know they're, they're coming together. It's been happening for a few years. Have you noticed that it's been happening? Um, do you see any changes, maybe, for the better or even for the worse under this sort of global umbrella of Disney parks? Some people don't care either way. Uh, Jeff in the Box would like to see the merchandise separated. Uh, Cloud Canteen says they're all different, which is what makes them special. No need to make them the same. Um, Matt from Mickey thinks that Disney should sort of keep the American parks separate from Disneyland Paris. I'm sorry, as I'm laughing at the music uh, in the background. Um, 
Disney World Days says, look, as long as they keep bringing great family entertainment, I'm confident that the leadership will make good decisions. I think that's a, a great sentiment, uh, Dave. Um, DJR Dave Rashoni says, only time will tell. Very true. Um, so Disney Dragons, a lot of the people saying the same thing. They don't care about what really is going on to a certain degree at that executive level, as long as the quality remains the same. And, you know, I, for one, you know, I, you know I've met Meg Crofton a few times. I, I think the parks, I think Walt Disney World has been doing uh, great over the last couple of years. I, there's nothing that concerns me about this sort of on its face about these merging. But again, I think time is really going to tell. Uh, I would love to hear, again, more, you know, as you sort of think about this, um, does it matter to you? You know, does it matter to you about those kind of changes? Again, not knowing these people, maybe, you know, Meg Croft had only been in the position since 2008. They don't have decades of track records to see sort of how they manage things. These flies are going to, but don't get done. Let's get out of my coffee, fly. Um, but yeah, time will very much tell sort of how this is going to work, how this, this globalization, this unification of Disney parks, as opposed to separating the two, uh, matter. Hey, look, we got a premier passport where you can now can go to bar both parks out of it. So at the very least, uh, some good things have come. Please keep commenting over on the uh, on the WW Radio blog. I'll embed the video there. Please keep the conversation going. I want to move on uh, real quickly because, again, we are in the middle of a Florida rainstorm. I'm here at Dunkin' Donuts, and the Internet could drop out at any second. Uh, real quickly, for all you Disney World moms... And dads, uh, moms to be and dads to be out there, that time is coming. Check your, put it on your calendar. September 2011, right around the corner, and that can only mean one thing, two things. The kids are back to school, and it's almost time for the Walt Disney World Moms Panel applications to start rolling in. If you are looking to join the Moms Panel, that's been going on for the past couple of years, you're going to be able to submit your entry between 9 a.m. on September 12th and 11.59 and 59 seconds p.m. on the night of September 16th. As you know, the panel looks for specialists in Disney about all different types of things, from Walt Disney World, Disneyland, the Cruise Line, Adventures by Disney, Disney Vacation Club, now Run Disney 2. So if you are a, um, a, a marathon, an endurance runner, they're looking for experts in that realm as well. If you're interested, you only have to meet some, certain criteria, 18 or older, you have to have access to a computer and an internet connection. And if you're hearing my voice, you obviously have either and or both. Fluent in English, por favor, manténgase Alejandro. Be familiar with Walt Disney World and have been there at least once in the last 12 months. But there's also some commitments as well. Before you dive right in, no, you have to participate in the Moms Panel for at least 24 months. Complete at least 25 written responses to guest questions per week. Provide your own opinions and feedback. Travel to Walt Disney World. I'm sure that would be a stretch for orientation between December 9th and 13th, 2011. You or an immediate family member cannot be employed by the Walt Disney Company or any of its subsidiaries or Dunkin' Donuts probably. You also can't be employed or be an immediate family member of an employee in the travel or theme park industry. So all you people that work down the street, no mom's panel for you. Um, of course, lots more information going to come out between now and September 12th. But if I were you, I'd start thinking about uh, applying. If you've either applied in the past or have been thinking about the Moms Panel, I'm friends. We've had a lot of Moms Panelists on the show in the past before. It's a great group of people, really a great family, sort of under this new aspect of the social media umbrella that Disney is, is doing. And they're doing a lot more online beyond just the Moms Panel over at DisneyWorldMoms.com. They're on Facebook. They do a lot of things on, uh, they're on Twitter. They do a lot of events as well. So uh, a, a lot of fun if you get an opportunity to be one of, uh, again, I'm laughing at the music, one of uh, the Disney World Moms panelists. And again, if you listen to previous episodes of WW Radio where they've come on, they've given some of their advice. It's not about how much you know. It's not about the trivia or navigating the parks. It's how passionate you are about Walt Disney World or Disneyland or whatever it might be. Go in there, be honest, and be yourself, and uh, and I'm sure you'll do very, very well. One last bit of news just want to um, throw out there. Uh, near, sort of attached to Walt Disney World, but not quite. We all know about Golden Oak, about southeast of the Magic Kingdom. That residential community uh, next to the uh, Four Seasons property is under construction. The first 80 lots are available now. If you happen to have $1.4 million or up in your pocket laying around, you want to live in Walt Disney World, you can do it over at Golden Oak. But the hotel that was planned for there, the Four Seasons Resort, has now been pushed back to 2014. That was really going to be sort of an, an anchor 
of this new area, uh, which has been under development. Uh, land was cleared for Four Seasons. No construction has started yet, so Disney has finally announced that the Four Seasons Resort um, won't open until at least 2014. So for those of you, I know a bunch of you had asked me about progress about that and some of the other things that have been going on on Disney property, that has been pushed back. So um, I, I'm curious, for people who are looking for really sort of luxury travel, the Four Seasons was something I think that a lot of people were looking forward to. Sure, the Grand Floridian is the flagship resort, but for people who really wanted sort of that five-star luxury accommodations, uh, it, it's going to be interesting to see how the Four Seasons are going to play into uh, what they're looking for. But again, you see Disney doing things on their own, the changes that they're making over at the Contemporary with that concierge-level suite, different sort of concierge packages that they're rolling out over at the Grand Floridian as well. So uh, very, very interesting to see. I know some people are saying, uh, Jess is saying that we should get a group WW Radio house over at the Four Seasons. I will be saving my pennies, and uh, I'm going to apply for a job here at Dunkin' Donuts as well. So um, that's it for the sort of official news this week, but there is something else that I tweeted out earlier today that we have been uh, thinking about and talking about and have sort of like a special announcement for you, the box people who are watching. And don't worry, if you're not watching live uh, and you're watching the video, that's okay. This is something for you guys as well. Uh, you know, because this whole sort of box thing um, really grew out of a simple broadcast that I did in the basement of my house in New Jersey back in 2007. The technology was just sort of coming uh, much more accessible. And I said, let me just try this out. I told my wife I was going to go downstairs. I was going to throw it out there and try and do a live broadcast for 10 minutes or so, see if anybody showed up expecting I'd be on for five minutes with two people, one of them being me, um, and it would be over. And eight hours later, um, out of pure exhaustion, I, I called the night and I came upstairs, and I was amazed at what became of that. Uh, we then started broadcasting at events like the Pacific Northwest Mouse Meet two years ago. That's where I sort of accidentally coined the phrase, the box people. You guys were watching. We then did it again at D23. I've done it at Walt Disney World, on the Disney Cruise Line, all over the place. And it's really become an important part of what I do personally. You know, the weekly show, the newscast, is something that I look forward to. I feel like I'm sitting down here at Dunkin' Donuts um, chatting with my friends um, who I can't hear, but uh, you guys still get to talk back to me in the chat room, despite what the lady over at Dunkin' Donuts thinks that I'm doing, talking to myself. So, But, you know, since you guys have really sort of taken on a life of your own, you know, and, and this group, which continues to grow, um, you know, a while back, somebody created just sort of on a whim this little logo. But a lot of you guys have come to me and asked for things like box people shirts and logos gears. So it's time to give you guys a new official, air quote, box people logo. And I'm asking for your help to do it. So um, thanks to the flock of seagulls, and of course I'm the Iron Mouse fan travel, we're going to have the box people logo contest. So starting today, Wednesday, July 6th, um, and running until Wednesday, July 27th, you're going to have three weeks, I'm going to invite you to design and create your own Box People logo and send it in for to consideration for the new official logo. You can submit more than one if you want. Um, just please be sure that the logo doesn't sort of infringe on any sort of copyrighted images or Disney characters. Um, think about something that would look good on a t-shirt. Um, and then, of course, we'll make them available for purchase to you guys, probably on Cafe Press or a Zazzle or something like that. Um, but, you know, in addition to sort of the, um, the fame and glory that's going to be associated with having you creating the, uh, the logo, we wanted to give you something more. And so that's why we thought about making this into an actual contest. And when you hear about something more and contests, you know that chances are my friend and yours Becky Mankin from MEI and Mouse Fan Travel is going to jump in and make the prize something really worth looking forward to and working for. So thanks to Becky. Um, you know, if I was asked the contest winner, hey, you just designed the official WW Radio Box People logo, what are you going to do now? They can, should, and will say, I'm going to Disney World. Because Becky and Mouse Fan Travel has very generously provided, wait for it, a two-night stay at Walt Disney World for up to four guests at a moderate resort. 
Caribbean Beach, Coronado Springs, Port Orleans, French Quarter, or Riverside um, for value or regular season through May of next year. Um, all kinds of details associated with that. But yeah, so you're going to design a logo and you're going to be able to take your family to Disney World for a couple nights at a moderate resort. Thanks to Becky and Mouse Fan Travel. I am sincerely uh, grateful for that. And I think this is going to be a lot of fun. I think this is going to give you guys uh, a chance to get a sense of ownership in this and to be as creative as you want to be. All you need to do is send your entries to contest, C-O-N-T-E-S-T, -E at www.radio.com. Again, you have until Wednesday, July 27th to get your entries in, and then we'll announce it on the show. We'll reveal the logo. We'll put it up again in a Cafe Press store for you guys to purchase. Um, you can send them in as JPEG files. You, know, you don't have to make them too huge and, and some sort of reasonable size. Again, just something so that we can see, and then we'll ask for a full, um, you know, a full resolution, high res one that we need for the T-shirts. But you know, something that's 1,200 pixels wide, whatever it is, doesn't have to be too huge. Um, I think you guys have a lot of fun with this. I, of course, am not allowed to participate because it's my show and because I'm not allowed to actually touch Photoshop. Just ask Tim Foster from Celebrations Magazine. So you got three weeks. Go. Go now. Start doing your thing. Um, have a lot of fun with it. Again, uh, don't forget, no copyrighted images, no Disney sort of characters, things like that. Uh, if you want to incorporate that WWE Radio logo, if you need a copy of that, let me know. I'll put that up on the site for you guys to download and use it uh, as need be. And um, Becky just Becky is saying three nights. Becky sent me two nights. Becky is saying three nights. Well, whatever Becky said. Look, it's her it's her trip. Whatever she wants to give you, she'll give it to you. But um, is she saying three nights? Is that what you're saying, Becky Mankin? Even though your email said two nights. Okay, so it's two nights, th three nights. I don't know. Becky says. I upped it to three. I didn't get them. I did not get the message. I now see it's just the beauty, the technology in the chat room. It's now three nights. Count them three. Becky, you're awesome. You're more awesome than you were when it was just two nights. So there you go. Your chance to design the new Box People logo. We'll put it on shirts. We'll put it on Facebook. Again, it'll be a lot of fun. You've got three weeks. Send your entries in to contest at www.radio.com. Again, you can win a three-night, count them three-night, moderate resort stay for up to four guests. At, uh, at Walt Disney World Resort. Thanks to Becky over at MouseFanTravel.com. Uh, I sincerely appreciate that. Uh, that is going to do it for this week's show. Speaking of Becky and Mouse Fan Travel, be sure you, when you come out to D23, you come by and stop by the booth. If you were there last year, the, uh, the, the alliance came together in the booth. I almost called it the Unholy Alliance, Becky, but the alliance at WWE Radio and Mouse Fan Travel came together. We've got bigger and better things planned for this year, I promise, for those that are in attendance at D23. And if you can't make it, that's okay, because box people are going to take you there too. Full live coverage all three days. Go visit D23ExpoLive.com. That's going to be our home base. You can check out some videos from the Expo in 2009. Uh, we'll have some other stuff coming there pretty soon as well. And you'll also be able to tweet using the hashtag D23 Expo Live as well. Don't forget, every Wednesday night, be sure and join us live here at www.newscast.com. If you can't check it out live, or if you want to keep the conversation going, please come by and comment. I'm going to post the video on www.radio.com in the blog. Come by, comment there. Let's talk about some of the news from this week's show or any uh, show. Again, keep this conversation going. I'll definitely be checking the blog and commenting there as well. Don't forget to follow me over on Twitter. I am at Lou Mangiello. And join the WW Radio page over at Facebook.com slash WW Radio. Visit the website for the blog, the forum, the discussion forums, lots more. Go to iTunes. Please rate and review and subscribe to the show and download the free WW Radio iPhone app and the all-new Walt Disney World Trivia iPhone app as well. More than 750 questions, descriptive answers, and did you knows. There's Celebrations Magazine. There's all kinds of goodness. And I'm happy to announce that the latest in my audio walking tour series, Frontierland, has just been released this week. You can find that now on the WW Radio shop at wdwradio.com slash shop. It's also available on iTunes as an instantly downloadable file, and you can pre-order the CD as well. Also, check out LouMangelo.com for more information about me. Thanks to our friends at Dunkin' Donuts for, uh, for the free Wi-Fi. Thanks to all you guys who are watching uh, live in the box and are catching this either on YouTube or on the blog. I do appreciate it. Um, 
that is going to do it. Um, it's time for a donut, and I leave you with that. Until next week, guys, see ya.